Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to interstitial lung disease.info. In this video, I'd like to make a comment about whether steroid treatment is actually necessary in treating interstitial lung diseases. There are different types of interstitial lung diseases where steroid treatment might be needed. And when we talk about steroids, it's a little bit tricky because we talk about uh, these medications that act as anti-inflammatory drugs. Now, steroids is not the correct term, so I'll start off with that. We generally call these uh, medications corticosteroids. A notable example of this would be something called prednisolone. You may have heard of prednisolone before. This is a fairly, how should I put this? Many patients are afraid of going on prednisolone treatment, on steroid treatment, because they feel that they will have a lot of side effects. But at the same time, we need to think about this in the wider context of interstitial lung diseases. What do we want to achieve? And this can be relatively tricky if we think about it. So when we try to differentiate the different types of interstitial lung diseases, so conditions in which there is hardening of the lung tissues, we need to figure out why that is. First of all, we need to figure out whether that condition is inflammatory in nature, predominantly inflammatory in nature, or is it purely fibrotic or a scarring disease of the lungs. Because if it's purely a scarring disease of the lungs, then the steroid treatment, the prednisolone treatment, may not be required or it may not be effective or in some cases even detrimental, especially if we give high doses. So your healthcare providers will give you the best ideas on what to do in your case in these situations. But just as some general guidelines, we tend to try to seek proof that there is inflammation driving the interstitial lung disease, that condition that is leading to hardening of the lungs, breathlessness, cough, and all these other symptoms. If we find that there is evidence of inflammation, and we can do that in various ways. So one would be when we do an autoimmune screen, an autoimmune panel, a blood test, and we figure out that there may be some kind of autoimmune disorder at play. Your pulmonologist or respiratory physician may in that case collaborate with a rheumatologist or someone who specializes in treating autoimmune disease to try to find out what's the best treatment for that. In most cases though, the first line of treatment may be prednisolone treatment. Not for all the conditions that fall under the scope of autoimmune disease, but it may be the first treatment because these are conditions that affect the body as a whole and the lungs are affected as well as other organs. So we try to treat the entire body with this type of treatment that we give steroids and we, we start off to reduce the inflammation so that we can prevent scarring of the lungs, we can prevent complications, we can treat the other symptoms associated with these conditions. Another scenario where we may need to use steroid treatments is when we have a condition called hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Now this is something that is can be a little bit controversial to what extent the steroids are helpful, but it does depend on a case-by-case -case basis. And in most situations, the first treatment for hypersensitivity pneumonitis is still prednisolone. And then we move on to other treatments depending on the response. But basically, this condition is related to inhaling something from the environment. It could be, for example, in people who work with birds, who work with moldy hay, work on farms, they inhale some kind of organic dust that leads to inflammation in the lungs. And everyone is a little bit different in this regard. It's a fascinating condition, but very difficult for patients to manage because in many cases we cannot find the exact trigger. So that's why we have ongoing inflammation in the lungs that can lead to scarring of the lungs. So that for, therefore, we try to just treat the inflammation to prevent the scarring, to prevent the complications that could be getting worse over time. So this is another scenario where your doctor might try to figure out if that is the condition based on the pattern on the chest CT scan, Potentially, maybe they will do a bronchoscopy with a bronchoalveolar lavage. So this is where they look through the airways with a little camera, put a bit of fluid in one segment of the lung, suck that fluid back out, send it to the lab. And if there is evidence of strong inflammation with high levels of lymphocytes in the lavage fluid in the lungs, it is an indication that the inflammation is actually the process that's driving the potential scarring of the lungs. So then the steroid treatment may be necessary in that situation. Another situation within the scope of interstitial lung diseases where we may need prednisolone treatment is, for example, in a condition called sarcoidosis. Now, sarcoidosis is a fairly common condition, I would say. Well, it's not necessarily a very common condition, but I would say for us working as doctors working in this field of interstitial lung diseases, sarcoidosis can be fairly common. And it is a condition that initially may require treatments with steroids. Not all cases of sarcoidosis do st require steroids though. In many situations the condition is stable or self-limiting, so it goes away on its own without any treatment. So monitoring is really, really important. 
But there are these cases of sarcoidosis where the condition progresses or it affects vital organs or it leads to, for example, very high calcium levels in the blood or there is a potential for another complication that can be serious. So your doctor may recommend steroid treatment. So these are just a few situations when we talk about autoimmune diseases, when you talk about hypersensitivity pneumonitis, when you talk about sarcoidosis. These are situations when steroids or corticosteroids more precisely may be required. And that could be the first step to treatment. The problem is, and this is where patients really struggle with, because when we start with steroid treatment, we are committing ourselves in this field of interstitial lung diseases to a fairly long treatment. So the, that treatment could, could sometimes need uh, a time scale of maybe one year or more, just to be able to control the inflammation until the body activates whatever it needs to activate in terms of regulating the immune system to prevent the condition from coming back again. And in many cases, we cannot always drop the steroids to zero. So we can start off at a higher dose at the beginning to try to control the inflammation and then try to reduce the dose to the lowest possible level that controls the condition. But in some situations, we cannot drop below a certain level of uh, prednisolone dose. So for example, we may come down to maybe 10 milligrams daily of prednisolone and Whenever we try to go further uh, down in this process to taper the steroids further, the symptoms come back, the breathlessness comes back, other complications come back. So this is a situation where, of course, we need to think about other ways to mitigate for potential side effects of steroids. And generally, doctors who prescribe steroids are well aware of these potential side effects, and it's a trade-off. We need to have the minimal level of side effects from the steroids, but the best disease control that we can achieve. So achieving that balance can be difficult and it's very nuanced and it's really, really important that you can consistently talk to your healthcare providers, especially if you are on steroid treatments, to figure out that you are on the right dose for you. It depends on a case by case basis. Now, I've received comments on this channel that corticosteroids are a poison. So are these sorts of things. Some people have really have had really, really bad experiences going on prednisolone. It's not always the case. I would say in the majority of cases, it is a very useful treatment, but it is a very non-specific treatment. So because it has this ability to reduce the inflammation levels in the body, but it does so in a very non-specific way, and because it is related to a stress hormone, to the stress response, it can lead to side effects, especially over a long period of time. These side effects can include high blood pressure. You know, you, people may get glaucoma. They may be at higher risk for diabetes. There may be a lot of situations in which steroids can lead to weight gain, for example, water retention. A lot of things can happen while people are on steroids, but generally these are when people are on very high doses for a very long time. If we are able to reduce the dose as soon as possible, we are counting on that anti-inflammatory effect, which generally can be maintained at a low dose, where the risk of side effects is relatively low, and we can control for some of these side effects, sometimes with other types of medications. So for example, if you are getting a lot of stomach difficulties, we may need to prescribe something to protect the stomach, something like a omeprazole, lansoprazole, something like that to control the acidity of the stomach so you're not getting gastritis and ulcers. Or sometimes we may need to prescribe bone protection because one potential side effects of steroids is that it can lead to thinning of the bones, the loss of calcium, and then it makes you more likely to, to develop fractures and things like that. So we need to make sure that we're treating for that and anticipating these side effects. And generally, if you are on prednisolone treatment, your doctor will talk to you about these potential side effects as they come up and they will try to mitigate for these situations. Now, of course, these side effects can sound scary, but we need to balance them against the risks of disease progression, the lung disease progressing, the autoimmune disease progressing. Because if we are not treating, potentially, a disease that could lead to scarring of the lungs, that is irreversible damage to the lungs, is that a better situation than potentially getting some side effects that can be managed? So this is where I cannot tell you exactly what's the right answer. It depends from patient to patient on a case by case basis, which is the right approach. But it's a very, very tricky subject. But I just wanted to make this video a little bit unscripted just to tell you my thoughts and feelings about steroid treatment. They can be very, very useful drugs, especially in the treatment of various interstitial lung diseases and other conditions. They're used on a large scale for different types of immunological generally diseases, they do carry a risk of side effects. Balancing these side effects against the benefits 
is the tricky part and that's where you need to always be in touch with your doctor to see whether you're on the right dose for you. And the final thing I'd like to mention is that sometimes the steroid treatments can be a first-line treatment. If you respond well to the steroids, it may mean that indeed the condition is immunological in nature. If that's the case, your doctor may then move on to a second-line agent, which is different. It's something that reduces the immune response, but in a different way. So there are second-line treatments. We sometimes call these steroid-sparing drugs. So this is basically a way in which to reduce the dose of steroids further while controlling the lung disease, achieving the same effect, So, by, but with less of the side effects. So this is a very, very tricky topic again. You may need to be followed up by a doctor who has expertise in managing these sort of drugs because, of course, if we introduce more and more drugs, there is always a risk for interactions. There is a risk for developing infections when we're on these uh, medications that suppress the immune response. So a lot of things need to be balanced and carefully weighed before we make a decision about treatment recommendations. So the best advice I would have for you is to not be afraid if you need to go on steroid treatment, but keep in close touch with your doctor, with your healthcare providers, report any side effects that you may be experiencing, and also try to keep an open mind about what you may be able to achieve in your case. It may be that sometimes, it is very hard for me to say this, but sometimes we may not achieve the optimum result that you want with the current treatments that we have. So it's really important to always think about other research projects, things that we could do to improve the current treatments that we have in the area of interstitial lung diseases, because of course, just going on a non-specific therapy such as steroids can be tricky for some patients. But we, it's sometimes the best that we have and we have to sometimes accept some side effects in order to achieve some kind of stability of a disease that could be worse than the steroids. And the fault really lies with this condition that you, you get. So if you get a bad lung disease for no apparent reasons, it can be really, really hard to accept. It's generally not your doctor's fault that you have this condition, so try to work with them in a constructive way to have a good dialogue, to see what you can do to move things forward in your case to get the best outcomes that you can get. I hope this was relatively helpful as a starting point to discuss about steroid treatment need in interstitial lung disease. If you have further questions, I'll be happy to make further videos down the line to explain different nuances of this. Thank you for watching. All the best and good health.